Okay, so let's begin with step one, the vertical asymptotes, which means I have to set my denominator equal to zero. So in this case, I have x squared minus x um, minus six equal to zero. And just to save myself paper, because I have already done this problem, right? It's the same exact function. We have already done the quadratic formula and we got that um, x equals three and x equals negative two. So I'm gonna draw all those vertical asymptotes. Oh, it should be positive three and negative two. Okay, now um, we also have to do step two, which is the vertical asymptotes, and or I'm sorry, the horizontal asymptote. And here, because the degree of the numerator is one and the degree of the denominator is two, we have the case where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, which means it's automatically gonna be at y equals zero which is the x-axis. So let's plot that there. Little dotted line. Okay, and then now step three says to find the y-intercept so that we get by plugging in zero. So I get negative two over negative six, which is one-third. So we get y-intercept of 0 and 1 third. Then step 4 says to find the x-intercepts and that we set um, the x-intercepts we get by taking the numerator equal to 0. So in this case x minus 2 equal to 0 which gives me x equals to 2. So my x-intercept is going to be 2 comma 0. Then um, Number five says to determine whether the graph will intersect the asymptote. So basically you take your whole function and you equal it to zero because your y, your horizontal asymptote is at zero. So whatever your horizontal asymptote is, that's what you're gonna set um, step five, your whole, your whole function equal to. Now if I multiply both sides by the common denominator, um, that's going to me x minus 2 equals 0. So because if I take x squared minus x minus 6 on this side they'll cancel and then 0 times anything is just going to still be 0. And if I solve that I get x equals 2. So and we already know what y value corresponds right when you plug in 2 into the function you're going to get 0. So I'm going to cross it at that x-intercept. It just happens to be the same point. It's just coincidence and then plot anything else necessary. So I'm gonna make myself a little chart. I just don't know what I'm gonna to need to put in the chart just yet. And then number seven would be to plot everything all together. So let me plot the dots that we have. So I already have a one and two graphed. Let me do zero and one third would be like right here. And then um, number four is two and so here and then um, that's what I've got now I know because I can't cross this this is gonna have to go downward towards that um, asymptote I don't have a choice actually no it could be going upward I have no idea what it's doing actually I'm assuming it goes downward but you're not supposed to do that you have to figure it out so if I need to figure out whether this should be going or down, I'm gonna actually have to plug in the value 2.5 because that's in between two and three. Now I do know that these are gonna connect and I know I can't go back down because otherwise I'd have another x-intercept. So this one has no choice but to go upward. And that one I, I can say. I just don't know if this is gonna bounce and then come back up. Actually, it shouldn't, right? because in the numerator it didn't have a square. 
So it should be going through it and it should be going downward. We'll verify when we plug in two. If we get a negative value, then yes, it was going downward. Um, but then I don't have anything over here and over here. I'm gonna pick two points on this side, like four and five, and then I'm gonna pick two points on that side, like negative three and negative four. And always pick two so you know whether it's going upward or downward, okay? So let's see, what do I get when I plug in 2.5? Now this is kind of cool, the calculator does do this like um, really cool thing. So I'm going to use this button here for x, x minus 2 over x squared, oops, I have star all over, x minus 2 over, oh my goodness my fingers, x minus 2 over um, x squared minus x minus 6. Now the first value I'm going to ignore because I have no idea what I have as x. So it says one third. Obviously x was equal to 0 because that gave me one third. But what I am going to do is I'm going to program x to be 2.5. So I'm going to say x store and stores right underneath the x button. So x store 2.5 and hit enter. Oh, I have to do it the other way around. So I'm going to say 2.5 store is x. Then I'm going to hit my up arrow until I get to that function again and I'm going to copy it. And then if I hit enter again, what it's going to do is it's going to plug in 2.5. And it gives me negative 2 ninths. So I was right in assuming that this was going to go downward because it did have to cross through the x-intercept because the numerator did not have a 2 to make it bounce off. Okay. Then for 4, let's say 4 stores x. And then let's highlight our function again, copy it, hit enter to plug it in. I get 1 third, 5 stores x. Let me go copy, enter, 3 fourteenths, negative 3 stores x. I get negative 5. 6 and negative 4 stores x. I get negative 3 sevenths. So we need to figure out, I need the decimals of these numbers. Um, so this, just because my brain does not work in fractions, this one I know is 0 0.333. I think that's 0.8, yep, negative 0 0.8, and 3 divided by 7 is 0 0.4. Okay, so that will help me visually when I'm trying to graph this. Now, this is going to be really, really hard to graph because these are all tiny, tiny decimals, and this box is so small. So I'm trying to zoom in here so you can see, and it's making my pencil do something really weird. I might have to start using my pen. To draw these. Um, so there was the one third, the two, and it went in this direction, right? And then that direction. Okay, yeah, that looks a lot better. It doesn't have the glare of the pencil. Now let's see. In 2.5, it should have been negative 0.2. So yes, it should have been going downward. Okay, so that one's good. Now 4 and 3. 4 and 0.3. So 4 and 0.3 is going to be about here. And then 5 and 0.2 is even lower. So it's actually going to be going upward this way and then trailing off that way. Okay? No, so I've got those two. Now over here we have negative 3 and negative 0.8. And then we have negative. 4 and negative 0.4 so that one's like a little bit in the middle so then this one is obviously going downward and this one has to trail over there okay and then now we have the image that we needed so um, in the computer you just a matter of you selecting the correct one here I have to actually do everything in order for me to decide what's happening but in the computer you're not gonna know whether it's this way or whether it's that way or whether it's 
this way and that way or up here or up down here um, unless you actually have graphed it yourself okay and on the um, test it's going to be very important that you graph it yourself because if you type it in the calculator and you just give me the correct answer that's only going to be one point of the problem the other um, three or four points on the test are going to come from you actually showing all the steps on how you graphed it yes I can type it in my calculator not this one not this calculator but a graphing calculator and yes it'll tell me what the graph looks like but again that's only one point if you select all the correct answers on the test I think you're gonna end up with like a 20 um, something like that so that's not gonna help it's definitely gonna be helpful to actually know how to do all the steps to graphing it and then that's what your paperwork is for so that I can verify that you're doing that because maybe you selected the wrong graph maybe you have one small error in your work right that's not worth losing all five points just because you got it wrong and you the wrong one so if I look at your work and I see oh well they just have a sign error here and that threw the whole graph off um, then I can give you back points because you knew the process you did all the steps um, and you showed that you understood the material you just had an, an arithmetic error um, and so that would be worth probably four four points just because you've got everything else there you just didn't select the correct graph um, so definitely, definitely need to be showing your work on these particular problems on the reviews and on the test. Um, just get in the habit of doing it so that way you're doing it when you take the test. So let's see this one. Um, we're going to do step one, which is the vertical asymptotes. So we're going to take that denominator and equal it to zero. And I get x equals to negative one. So that means here to have negative 1 as my asymptote then step 2 is the horizontal asymptote so the degree of my numerator is actually equal to um, the exponent is 1 and the bottom is 1 so the degrees are equal which means that the horizontal asymptote is at y equals this coefficient over this coefficient, 4 over 1. So then that means my horizontal asymptote is up here at y equals 4. Then I'm going to get into step 3, which I believe was the intercept. Yeah, the y-intercept. So we're going to plug in 0 negative 2 over 1 which is negative 2 and so I'm going to draw that 0 and negative 2 is here and then let's go into the x-intercepts and that you get by taking the numerator equal to 0 so if I add 2 over I get 4x equal to 2 if I divide by 4 I get 2 fourths which is 1 half so that means I have 1 half comma 0 Great, more fractions. They're a little bit harder to graph. So right in the middle there at zero. Okay, so then now let's do the next um, step, which is to see if my function crosses the horizontal asymptote. So I'm gonna take my function and I'm gonna equal it to four because that's my horizontal asymptote. Now here, if I multiply both sides by x plus 1, that cancels, leaving me with 4x minus 2. But over here, I actually end up with 4x plus 4. Now if I try to get all my variables on one side, I end up with negative 2 equal to 4. And that's not true, which means no. Graph does not cross the horizontal asymptote okay now had I been able to solve that and got x equals 2 or something then I would have had to plug that 2 into the function to get the y value and I'd know what point it does intersect or it does cross the horizontal um, 
uh, asymptote, but here it doesn't because I got no solution there. So then step six is to make my table in case I need anything else extra. Now, I only have two sections here because there's only one vertical asymptote. So I have to the right and I have to the left. Now, you basically need to understand whether um, the graph is going to be below the horizontal asymptote on the right or above it, and then the same for the left side. Is it going to be below or is it going to be above it? So in this case, I've already got two points there, and I know I can't cross that, so it's already evident this is going up and has to trail off that way, and I can't cross this either, so it has to go downward. So the right-hand side is already pretty much taken care of. Not pretty much, it is. But what I need to know is, is my graph going to be up here or is my graph going to be down here for this side? So let's plug in some numbers like negative 3 and negative 5. I'm going to go further out because when I got, when I got real close to it, um, it looked really weird. Um, and actually, I already know that it's going to be up here. Why do I know that it's going to be up there? Because when I found my x-intercepts, there was only one x-intercept and it's there. There were no x-intercepts over here. So I couldn't possibly have the graph going this way because then I'd have to cross the x in, the x-axis, creating another x-intercept that supposedly doesn't exist, right? Otherwise, it would have come out, it would have surfaced itself in step four, okay? So I already know it's gonna be up here, but just to make sure that our graph is a little bit precise, um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in these numbers. So I'm gonna program my calculator for x minus two over x plus one, ignore the first value, negative three, store x, and then plug it in. I get seven, and then negative five, store x. I get 11 over two, which is 5.5. So that definitely helps. Negative three and seven, is here and then negative 5 and 5.5 is going to be there and so then obviously you can tell it's going upward here and then downward that way okay now I'm a horrible drawer so I didn't even go through my points but you get the idea okay so the graph should look something like this and then in my math lab you just basically select that graph Okay, so now we get into one that tells me apparently it should intersect the horizontal asymptote, but I don't know. Let's go see what we get when we do all the steps. So step one is the vertical asymptote, which means I'm going to take my denominator and I'm going to equal it to zero. Now this one I can factor. I'm going to factor it really quickly. If you have to go through the AC method to factor it, do that. If you have to go through the quadratic formula to find these solutions, do that. But I know that this is x plus 3 times x plus 3, which means I get x plus 3 squared. So in order for me to solve this, I would have to take the square root of both sides. And there's no such thing as plus or minus 0. It's just 0. So when I minus 3 on both sides, I'm going to end up with x equal to negative 3. So I only have one vertical asymptote at negative 3. Now, let's talk about the ver horizontal asymptote. So my degree of my numerator is actually equal to 2 and the degree of the denominator is also equal to 2 which means they are equivalent. So I'm going to have my asymptote at y equals this coefficient which is 2 over this coefficient which is a little invisible 1 which means y equals 2. So let me draw that in blue. There we go. And then um, the number three is the y-intercept, so I'm going to plug in zero. So I get negative four over nine, which is negative 0.44 repeating. 
So in the computer, I would type it in its fraction form. We plug zero for X and we got negative four ninths for Y. But on the paper, it, you kind of have an idea of where it is. So zero, negative 0.4 is about right here. Oh, that's my Y intercept, not my X intercept. So 0 0.4 is going to be down here. Then to find your X intercepts, you're going to set your numerator equal to 0. So this one, I think I'm going to have to do quadratic formula. I don't think that I can factor that easily. So negative 3 plus or minus 3 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. I get 9 plus, let me see, 16 times 2 plus 9. So this is a not a nice number, so I'm going to use a decimal. So negative 3 plus the square root of 41 divided by 4 um, gives me 0 0.85. And then if I do the minus, I will get negative 2.35. So. I don't think they're going to ask you for this bit of information, but if they do, they'll tell you which decimal place to round it to, or they'll want the exact. They'll want you to write negative 3 plus square root of 41 over 4, and then negative 3 minus square root of 41 over 4. But regardless, I know where these are, so positive 0.85 is going to be close to the 1, and then negative 2.35 is going to be over here on this side. Okay, so it's looking like it's gonna kind of curve like this, but we'll see what's, what's happening here. Okay, number five says, does it intersect? So we're gonna take our function And we're going to equal it to our horizontal asymptote, which was 2. And so in this case, if I multiply both sides by this common denominator, um, it's going to cancel here. And then what I'm going to end up with is 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9 on the right-hand side. Now if I distribute that... I get this equation, and then it is quadratic squared over, and they actually happen to cancel out from both. So then I'm going to minus 3x on both sides. And I'm going to minus 18 on both sides. Then I'm going to divide by 9 on both sides, and so we get that x equals negative 22 over 9, which is about negative 22 over 9, about negative 2.44, okay? So it does intersect. That means that I'm going to have negative 2.44 for x and 2 for my y value. So let's graph that point. Now this is at negative 2.35. So it's even further in the negative and at 2. So it's going to be about right there. These boxes are so tiny, so it's really hard to tell. So I can tell what's happening over here. I can tell that this is going to be doing this bit, right? It's going to curve like that. And this one has to go back through there. But because it can't cross that, it only crossed it at this one place. So this one has to trail off in that direction. It has no choice. It has to trail off. Um, and for part six, I do have to create a table 
because I have all this information for what's happening to the right of the vertical asymptote, but I don't have any information as to what's happening to the left. So I'm gonna plug in negative five and negative seven to see what's happening. Is the graph gonna be up here or is the graph gonna be down here? Um, so let me plug in my function here. 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. Um, x squared plus, oops, plus 6x plus 9. Ignore the first value. I'm going to plug in negative 5. And I get 31 over 4, which is 7.75. Now I'm going to plug in x, negative 7 for x, and what is that? That is 4.5625. So that gives me an idea of where these points go. Negative 5 and 7.75 is about right here. Actually, I should be using the pin. And then negative 7 is 4... 0.525, so about right there. Well, that's enough information to tell me that it's going to go upward here and then it's going to trail off that way down here. And so you would pick the graph that looks like this. This looks like a weird little tail. Um, but you would pick the graph that best matches this information. Now, this video is already 25 minutes and a half, so I'm going to stop it here and then we're going to go into the next um, examples which are, they give you the information, whether it's a graph or sentences, and you have to come up with the rational function. So that's a little bit interesting, um, but we're gonna work on those in the next video.